So we spent a lot of time talking about programmability and the fact that we want to make sure that everything is programmable and accessible. Well, what I'm showing up on the screen right now is a instance of our virtual machine showing the Swagger interface and the REST API and the REST API documentation. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through and show just a little bit of some of the things that are here. And then in the back window here, I have a Google Sheets document that we've added some functions to that do some simple parsing of information directly from the REST interface and allow you to get real-time information about the system into a simple Google Sheet. So these are relatively simplistic versions, but this can be extended if you wanted to do something like the inventory of your network through a REST API, you could do that. If you wanted to get the utilization of a given ports or all the ports in your network through Google Sheets, you could do that. Uh, all because of the fact that we have a REST API backing the system up. So, as I said, we have the full REST API. And for, so real quick, VLAN table, basic construct of your average router switch, right? So we have a set here. We've got git posts, and we have git input. And we can get a list of what's going on within the system. So first I want to see, OK, what are the VLANs that I currently have configured in my system? So we'll see in here, I've got a full set of documentation on the system and on the VLAN table and what's in here. Uh, I have one field here that's required for a query to the REST interface, and that is this PID. And the PID for our switch instance is actually bridge normal. So I'm going to enter that oh, if I spell it right. If it's a PID, why is it a value as opposed to a number? But uh, mind you, finding a number would be a pain in the ass, so I like the fact that you can enter <laughs> it's a, you know, actually a, a, a known string. word structure. It'd be no more than about eight bytes long, but bridge underscore normal. So we're going to scroll down now, and I can hit submit. And so what just happened, it's going to show I've got the, the curl output that was actually generated and sent to the VM instance of Halon OS CX, uh, the request URL, and then the response body that came back. Mm -hmm. So here I can see, OK, I've got my VLANs. I've got VLANs 1, 2, and 3. Right? So I know three VLANs are configured on the device. Now, over here on my Google Sheets, I also happen to have a handy function. Go and add the cell, configured VLANs, one, two, three. Same interface. We can see that the device is able to, or that Google Sheets was able to read through the REST interface what's configured there. So now let's pop back. Let's see what we can actually do about some configuration. So I want to create a new resource instance. All right, and to create a new resource instance, I'm going to get my structure here. And what I'm going to want to do, I'm going to want to say, OK, I'm going to create an instance within Bridge Normal, because that's the one that we've been using. And did I do the same misspelling twice in a row? That's this is a different misspelling, because you misspelled Bridge, too. Burge. It's Burge. 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 Yeah. Burge. Well, see? Hey, Burge. It's the Burge identifier. <laughs> All right. And so now. Uh, I could go through and dig through the documentation to see all the pieces that I need, but I know that the two things that I need to define a, a VLAN are the name, and we're going to call it VLAN4, and I need the ID. And in this case, ID is an integer, so we just do 4. Uh, and then we're going to scroll down. The example value is up on the side, too. What was that? The example value on the side for where you're entering that. So having some syntax right there is nice. Right, and it gives you the full syntax, and you can actually dig into all the details to figure out exactly uh, what you need. Okay, so that answers my next question, which is it sure. does require you to format your JSON correctly. You forgot a comma between <laughs> the two values. Um, the only thing was that the example didn't seem relevant to. No, it didn't, but just but it, the concept that there's data yeah. there is nice. Yeah, and if you actually, and I'll avoid clicking over here because it will actually propagate everything into the data field and then I have to prune it down to just mm -hmm. what I want. <laughs> but if I click over to the model, it will actually give me the documentation on what each of those column values means. Mm. Uh, okay. That's nice. Very cool. And this is, this is ex e directly extensible within a, like Google Sheets and or Excel? 
Uh, I haven't tried to do it with Excel, but presumably you could write some VBA backend to be able to use Excel just as well as you use Google Sheets. Mm -hmm. Okay, and thank you for catching my comma mistake on the fly. I make mistakes. There we go. We got a 201 back, so that was successful. Mm -hmm. So now let's pop back over to Google Sheets and we'll force this to update again. All right, so there we can see Google Sheets reading back in from the device. I can see that I now have VLAN 4 configured on the device. And we'll pop over here. Uh, so another one of the functions here we have is what's the link state for every given interface on the device. And so let's see what my status is of my links. And give it a little time to load there. Okay, so I can see 111 is up, 1110 is also up. And the actual interfaces here are actually being read from the device itself as well. So whatever is being instantiated, I can actually see. And then my link state is actually pulling based on what's actually physically on the device. Now the next thing I want to see is, okay, so what's my connectivity? Which VLANs are configured on my trunks in, on my VLAN trunks in the device? So here, let's go ahead and access this one. <coughs> All right, so now Google Sheets going off in the background, does the query, sees, okay, here you go. Slot our port 111, you've got VLANs 1, 2, and 3. Uh, port 1110, you have VLANs 1 and 2 configured on as your trunk. So those are the accessible VLANs on those interfaces. Jumping back over into my Swagger interface now. First, we want to get a list of our ports. Let's see. So we already have a list over there on the Google Sheet, but let's make sure that uh, when we look at what's here on the port interface that it's going to be in agreement. <laughs> As you can see, the port table just happens to be one of the single largest tables in the system. All right, so uh, I can see that my ports, I have 1 slash 1 slash 1 and 1 slash 1 slash 10. So those are the ports that are currently up and running in the system. They've been instantiated. If a port hasn't actually been instantiated and enabled in the system, it won't actually show up in the port table. It would only be in the interface table. Now let's go and let's look at the actual set of attributes for a given port. So here... I'm going to come down in and I'm going to say I want to look at port 1 slash 1 slash 1. And so if you that. If to do 1 slash 1 slash 10, would it be just comma? It would just be 1 slash 1 slash 10. No, but 1 slash well 1 slash 1, comma, 1 slash 1 slash 10. Uh, like I don't. If I wanted to pull multiple ports. I, I don't think you could, I don't know if you can. I don't know if the Spiker interface will let you do mm. multiple ports in a single pool. Okay. Uh, and selector here. So. There are different types of data that are stored within any given table in the database. So you have status, statistics, and configuration. Mm -hmm. Configuration is what we're interested in because we actually want to see about configuring information about this port. So I'm going to get the configuration selections of elements of this port. Okay, so there we go. Uh, really quickly, it was able to go in and read back all the status on the device. We can see there's IPv6 configuration parameters in there. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's my VLAN trunks. So confirming what we saw when we were looking at Google Sheets, VLAN trunk is configured on the port. I've got one, two, and three configured on it. All right, so now we're gonna do a configuration. We're gonna stick with port one slash one slash one. I as a shortcut, I went and I copied everything from the other one. I can try and bring everything in from this example field, but that ends up being too much data. Uh, so we're going to do command paste. Hey, that works. Now, uh, from here. Does it actually become too much data? Like, will, will it? No, 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 no. It's, it's just, it's a lot of data, but it, it will be able to parse that. Yeah, so the, the thing is that value, that it will be able to parse it, but then you have to know what all is in there versus having, I now know exactly what the configuration is of that yeah. port. I can modify a known good quantity as opposed to, to dealing with what's there. So I'm just going to do a copy. 
And there's not like a, is there a plan for in the Swagger interface to go and say, hey, port one dash one slash one slash one, I want you to ingest this and populate the data fields. So now I can go and make minor modifications. That's a feature request. Uh, that's a good feature request. <laughs> All right, it's a rather easier step than doing what I just did. All right, so now I've went ahead and I've added VLAN 4 here. Mm -hmm. Uh, one thing I do have to be aware and conscious of in this case, the actual name of the port gets pulled over as a configuration value when I did my lookup. But the name of the port is not actually a mutable value. So if I try and send this back, it's going to blow up on me and not be happy with me for having done that. So I'm going to remove name from this. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. <laughs> you could show it blowing up too, yeah. <clears throat> are actually useful. Uh, the whole point is not have the demo blow up on you. <laughs> no. <laughs> we should increase the font size. I, I can go back and do that. Uh, and yes. you have a quick shortcut for that? Because, again... I say, uh, what are you asking? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So response code 200. So I was successfully able to add VLAN 4 as a trunk member for port 1 slash 1 slash 1. All right, so now if we go and we force an update here in Google Sheets, 4231. We were able to successfully add through the REST interface and able to reflect that back in Google Sheets through REST API configuration. So while we're looking at the sheets, so your sure. system interfaces is yes. defined as sort and then the value, right? Mm -hmm. So you've sorted them and it's done the usual sheets, dumb sort, where yeah. it can't be in order. However, when you go to link state, you're getting responses back. Are those, are those also sorted the same way? Link state. So your next column across, oh. link state. Oh, oh so that, that's actually command? the way the, the way the algorithm, or the way the pro, excuse me, the way that works is it's actually looking up link state of the column next to it. Okay, so it's doing it individually. Yeah, it, that's doing okay. it port by port as it goes that down. Makes, oh, I see that now, okay, that's more simple. Right, and same over here. This is also doing the same lookup of the actual interface name and return the trunk values for it. Configured VLANs is just looking at the VLAN table to see which VLANs are currently configured on the device. That's cool. Yeah, I just didn't see the reference back there. I was like, well, that's lucky they come out in order. <laughs> yeah. cool. so, so what Frank's showing you is that the, there's a script that auto-generates spreadsheet functions for every REST API. And so you can, as you start typing, I don't know if it's in this demo, you start typing a spreadsheet function, essentially you get, like you would in any spreadsheet, you get kind of like, here's a function, here's the parameters, and like context-sensitive help. So you can just, you know, if there's a REST API and you can use a spreadsheet, you can figure out, you know, what you want to do. Yeah, and I, I don't know how well that's coming through, right, but there you can get a list of what are the, uh, functions that can return values here within oh, the system. Oh, that is really nice. How do you deal with security to the device within Google Sheets? I mean, this is, your demo device is internet accessible, right? Yes. Um, but uh, is it your laptop doing the lookup, or is it Google doing the lookup and returning back to you? And, and where's your authentication stored for that, as uh, it were? And so right now we're brute force. Uh, but the authentication solution would be certificate stored user side uh, for validation to the mm. device. Uh, so that's the basic gen general gist of what we're trying to get at. And this is just, you know, very simplistic version, obviously. Uh, but obviously, as you can see, there's a table here for everything in the system. So you can get a sense of what configuration and full flexibility that this program programmatic interface gives you and the ability to manipulate and get the box to the state that you want through a purely programmatic interface. Uh, it's, a, it's a very powerful system, and, and I think that a lot of innovation potential in making the life of the network administrator easier, especially being able to use Google Sheets to get a quick status update on what's going on in your network. I find one of the biggest barriers for network admins who are not already deep in JSON and Python and stuff like that is getting into it because yeah. their favorite option to choose from are all terrible, thus they don't do any of it. And they're like, SDN and systematic automatic program, I'm not going to touch any of that. I'll just do the command line because... They got putty, they're in. Yeah. Yeah. So that right there is a, you know, a simplistic way of, I can go and ingest this information yeah, and exactly. dump it out like, done. You, you've, and and if, if it actually works in Excel, you've got on board a lot more people because it's the barrier of entry to actually yeah. get in and be able to do your stuff. And, and a, a network engineer that doesn't know Excel is probably few and far between. Mm -hmm. yeah. You would be amazed. <laughs> or depressed, one of the two.
that their management potential. <laughs> <laughs>